People come into my live streams and ask all the time, should I work on this commander or that commander? And currently it's Nevsky or CPO. But I wanted to make this video to help you figure out at any moment in time, what commander should I work on and why? So stick around in this video for a process that you can repeat to figure out which commander is really the right one for me to work on right now. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and this video has been sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms, and my goal is to help you better understand the process by which you figure out which commander to work on. And right now, this question of, should I do CPO or Nevsky? I mean, they're both very powerful commanders, but how do you answer this for yourself? Now, there are a number of considerations that go into this, and that's why it's not just such a simple question as, oh, just do CPO, or oh, just do Nevsky. There is nuance to it, and I want to walk through that. Now, in general, I will say you can't go wrong with CPO and Nevsky in particular. This new brand of commanders is so strong. They're practically mythic tier commanders. So make no mistake about it. The new commanders that are coming into the game these days are just insanely powerful. And that is where your sculptures should be going once you reach the season of conquest. That's KVK and 4 Beyond. But this process will be helpful for you, even if you're not in the season of conquest yet. I want to show you two things. I'm going to use my main account as an example of this process by which I figure out what commander to invest in. And then also, I'm going to show you my restart project where I will be doing both Nevsky and CPO. And we'll talk about that process as well. So on my main account, when I try to figure out what I should be using when I fight in the open field, the thing that I look at is the marches that I'm actually bringing, and you can see all of them over here, and what changes I would need to make to improve the overall group that I am bringing, not just thinking about any one march, but all of them. And to me, it's actually very obvious for this particular murder ball where the weakness is. And I'll you know pause the video if you want to take a moment to spot it. I have talked about this, but in my opinion, even though Artemisia and Amonatori is an amazing march, by the way. It is actually the weakest march in this particular configuration. You may be wondering, like, wait, why is that, just cool? That is because this particular march is only doing area of effect damage, and it even is doing a buff to enemies, boosting their skill damage, which is not a good thing in this day and age. So what I want to do when I bring CPO into my lineup is to look at how can I get rid of this weaker march or get rid of a commander that would allow me to put CPO into my lineup. Now, this march over here, as I was saying, is on my chopping block. Is something I want to get rid of anyways. And you may notice, I don't have Alexander the Great anywhere. I don't have Trajan anywhere. Both of those commanders paired with CPO is a great replacement over here. And the reason that I'm not attacking my Guan and Leo combination and getting rid of Leo to just drop in CPO, that would be easier is in part because I already have the equipment for another march over here, but also because Guan and Leo is so strong. Why would I change that? I wouldn't touch that, wouldn't change it, not changing it for probably another year. So to show you perhaps a better example of how I go through this process, let's get a look at my restart project account. This just entered the season of conquest. So this should be very relevant for people who are deciding between CPO and Nevsky, and I'll walk through this with you. I've got several marches already at my disposal. In fact, rather than showing you from this screen, I will go and bring out my marches right over here. There's actually only three marches that I have that are combat ready. I only have three sets of equipment currently. And uh, before I get into the details here, I will mention the considerations, the full list of them, when you're deciding, do I invest in this commander or that commander, or this march or that march? The first consideration is, do I have the equipment to support what I want to do? Am I trying to make a new march or make an existing march stronger? Um, and is there any weakness in the marches that I'm already bringing? And is there something that I need to be addressing? Now, there's actually several things going on on this account across all those categories, which is why I want to talk about it. I have enough materials to probably make one more set of equipment, maybe two, if I sacrifice making any other upgrades at all to the three sets that I already have, maybe I can make two. So I actually am in the market for making one or two more marches on this account because I really only have three that are viable 
for open field fighting in the Season of Conquest right now. The second thing you should notice immediately is that there's a weakness in the three marches that I have, which is that Alex with Esong is suboptimal for the Season of Conquest. Why is that? I've got a Archer Commander paired with an Infantry Commander. Like, yeah, it works, and yeah, it actually is not so bad, but there's absolutely an opportunity here. So that should be something you notice kind of immediately, with practice anyways, when you look at this, is that I have some mismatched troop typing up over here, and it happens to work out okay, but maybe that's something I can pr improve upon, and that is a goal of mine. So when we look at the commanders that are coming into the game, um, we've got CPO, who's on his way, and we also know that Nevsky is in the Season of Conquest. I just got to Season of Conquest. He's really good. I actually have enough sculptures to max both of those commanders. So when we look at the sort of upgrade that I want to make here, um, if I only have the sculptures to get one of those commanders, what do you think I should do? And it's kind of a tricky one. If I could only get Nevsky or CPO, weirdly enough, I think what I would do is probably get Nevsky in this instance. Why is that? Because what I could put behind Alexander the Great is Sun Tzu. Alex Sun Tzu, I mean, it's fine. And then I could use Nevsky with Esong. I mean, Saladin with Esong is good. Nevsky is better than Saladin. And then all of my commanders are deployed. That would only take one set of gear. And actually, that would be pretty strong. Now, if I'm trying to just stick to those four marches and I have enough sculptures to do CPO as well, boom, I could do Alex and CPO, Nevsky and Esong. And I'm good to go. By the way, Chiskul from the future here, and I realize one more thing I need to mention about why I went the Nevsky route for another Cav March with Esong, rather than just saying, hey, why not just leave Alex and Esong in your march and add CPO with, like, Sun Tzu, right? So why do Alex Sun Tzu? You could just add CPO Sun Tzu. That's your new march and leave Alex with Esong. And the reason I don't want to do that is very important. I don't want to make a fourth set of infantry gear. And although I, I get that I have the materials to make a new set of gear right now, I think that having four of any one troop type at this moment in time, based on the power level of these new commanders coming into the game, is fairly inflexible. And I think it is far more advantageous to have, at most, three of any one troop type and then one of each other troop type. So my bigger vision for where I want to go here now is three infantry marches. Obviously, I have three infantry marches already. And then I want to add a cav march or add an archer march. In fact, I want to do both of those. And I call that a 3-1-1 one, one configuration. With that configuration, I mean adding the CPO with Sun Tzu march, even though that is a great march, I think. Actually, I think it's going to be really strong in the open field for players newer to the Season of Conquest. I don't think that's a good fit for this particular setup I'm trying to make specifically because I am not in the market for a 4th Infantry March. I am in the market for making a cavalry set of gear, making truly my first cav march that I bring to the field. If I was spending, or I have more at my disposal, or this is really important to think about, I made a video a long time ago saying that everybody should have 5 marches that they can bring to the open field. It might be worth my considering having a weak set of gear on a fifth march that I only bring to the open field sometimes. And this is something I learned by talking with my good buddy Tripod, who is saying that's a tactic that he does. He has a fifth weakest march that he uses for big, important moments. So like a pass opening is an important moment. You might get worse trades, but you need to sway the fight. Um, so in that instance, I think that I would actually benefit a lot by virtue of having five marches. I kind of need to figure out how I get to that. And so one way that I could approach this is by going in and saying, okay, my my Guan, my Guan CJ, I'm not touching that, man. That's really good. I go over here, and this is going to be, I'll, I'll use Epic CPO for now, okay? Here we go. Epic CPO, let's go. You know it's going to be, oh, I marched instead of fixing the preset, GG. I got Alex and CPO. Maybe it'll be CPO and Alex. I'm not sure what the order is going to be. We'll, we'll have to test to figure that out. And then down over here for my fourth march, what we're looking at, what, what do I use as a proxy for Nevsky? How about Dragon Lancer? <laughs> we'll use Dragon Lancer as our, uh, our, oh, no, no, maybe Saladin. Well, whatever. 
I don't want people to get confused and think that I'm actually using Saladin. Um, no, for whatever, Lancelot. Uh, there's our there's our Nevsky proxy, okay? Um, I could do Nevsky with Minamoto. I could do Nevsky with by bars if I wanted to use an epic commander. And I know that sounds weird, but like actually it would not be the worst thing in the world. Um, by bars does a number of things pretty well, actually. Area of effect damage, that's really good. Uh, defense, that's pretty solid. And a march speed boost when you break combat and a little bit of healing, actually pretty decent. So I'm going to just put this here for now, okay? And, and maybe I'll actually, in my instance, I'm probably going to Max Minamoto, or you could use a Relic Double C. Okay, there we go. I fixed it. And then for my final march, you may notice, like, I haven't put Esong anywhere. What I could do when I need five marches is that I could just use either Esong and El Cid or Esong and Mehmed. And this is, you know, if you've been attending my streams, I've been talking with Cortex about this. He thinks this is a terrible march. And, and I kind of agree that it is lacking in march speed and tankiness, so it's going to get caught out. People are going to target Esong's first thing anyways. So you're gonna get targeted a lot, you're gonna get focused down a lot, and in situations where you're losing the fight, you're gonna get wrecked. So I wouldn't wanna run this all the time. So what I could do is create a situation where I've got Guan and CJ, uh, Alex and CPO, Trajan and Ethel fled. I've got Nevsky with Esong when I use four marches, and when I need five marches, I bring in Nevsky with unmaxed but relic Minamoto or Nevsky with, you know, unmaxed but relic CC. And then I go in and I use my E-Song with Mehmed, both of them relic. And I have some weak archer gear and I call it a day. And then I've got five marches. I intend in the long term to go and work on, by the way, um, E-Song and whatever the new archer commander is that comes into the game like three months from now. Hopefully that's a good pairing. So in case all of that didn't make it clear as to why when someone asks me in a stream, should I do this commander or that commander? Like it's not all that simple. It depends on what equipment you have. If you're building more marches, um, whether or not you've got other commanders that are maxed that are relevant to, to that equation. And if you're trying to decide right now between CPO and Nevsky, I do want to answer that question for you. Uh, here's what you need to know. The thing that's most insane about Nevsky is how well he works when you are swarming a target. This is true for the damage he deals, the damage he takes, and also the debuff that he applies. So for whales that are going to be swarming garrisons, if you're deciding between CPO and Nevsky, I would say probably Nevsky is a far more important pick pretty much every time I swarmed a garrison with Nevsky and some other strong commander behind it. Usually, I think that was William. Uh, sometimes it was XY with Nevsky. Every time I swarmed a garrison, I traded either even or positive, and I'm applying that super crucial debuff. So that is a huge win. If you are not swarming garrisons, and you only care really about the open field, then I think new CPO is going to be really good. And I, I mean, I guess I can pull up his skills here. New CPO is giving you an AOE health reduction, which is amazing. It's also fine for swarming a garrison, but you'll notice many of his skills do not really work for swarming a garrison, which is why I say it's not as good. I think Gilgamesh is far better suited for garrison swarming, for whatever that's worth. Um, you get some extra stats over here, which is nice. Also, uh, you get damage factor over time to the target, which is nice, but you get shielding when you're taking skill damage. This is so good for the open field. It's so good, and he's going to pair so nicely with all those guans running around that are silencing stuff. I think that for a bigger open field impact, CPO is the answer. So for players that are well, the, the overwhelming majority in this game, that are often not going to be called to regularly swarm a garrison, you are far better off investing in CPO than doing Nevsky. So all other things equal with whatever your murder ball equation looks like, equipment, commanders you have, uh, combos you either have available to create, I'm only using three marches, I want four or five, and so on. CPO is going to be your play, and then I would say Nevsky would come next as a fast follow, or an unmaxed Nevsky even would be a good starting point. Uh, 5551 five, five, is more than enough to start using your Nevsky, 
and having a really good time with him in the open field. He's just really good. Now, of course, I'll be doing a ton of testing and making a lot of suggestions whenever a new commander comes into the game, and CPO is no exception. So if that's something you want to see, uh, where I can advise on exactly how well CPO is performing in many different combos, then consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss that video. And if you found this helpful, throw a like on here. It really does support the channel in a meaningful way. And if you want to see the live stream where we're having a little more of this conversation, I'll have a card up in the top. Also, did a little crafting in that stream, and man, it went really well. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.